The Federal Emergency Management Agency is working 121 major disasters. The pandemic has caused almost half of them. Emergencies like ransomware attacks and COVID vaccine distributions on top of prepping for hurricane and wildfire season all fall to Deanne Criswell, the FEMA administrator. The Senate confirmed her on April 22nd. Madam Administrator, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. I think a lot of people think that you're just managing a few major things, the things that are in the headlines. Review the full landscape, please, of the responses that you're engaged in now at FEMA. Welcome, ma'am. Well, thank you first for uh, having me on today. I've been looking forward to having this conversation. You know, as you stated, we have 121 major disasters that are currently um, active within FEMA. Um, and the majority of those are for COVID-19, right? Every state and territory received a disaster declaration. And so we have staff supporting each state with their ongoing response and recovery efforts from that. Um, but we're also supporting the recovery efforts from disasters that have happened over the past few years. You know, we don't just see a hurricane season anymore. We see a wildfire season. We see heavy rains that we saw earlier this year in Louisiana, ice storms in Texas. And so all of these things um, continue their recovery process. And those are part of, and the majority of the other part of the 121 disasters that we are managing. I imagine that stretches your workforce. What's the condition of the response workforce today? What do you need skills wise or what do you need more of? And how are the folks doing that are doing this work every day? You know, I'll start by saying that FEMA has the most dedicated public servants that I think the government has to offer. And our, our employees have been committed to helping survivors um, before, during, and after disasters at all times. Um, they have been stretched, right? We have been working since the 2017 hurricane season, um, supporting multiple responses and then the ongoing recovery efforts from those. Um, then we put COVID-19 on top of that. And as I said, every state and territory received receiving a declaration. Um, but, you know, we're not, uh, um, uh, we, we managed multiple disasters all the time. And so it's not something that is new to us. And so our team, we work really hard to make sure as we continue to do our ongoing support of state and local uh, jurisdictions that we give our team the rest that they need and get them reset for what is coming, the peak of wildfire season and the peak of hurricane season. And we've been in the process of doing that over the last several months to make sure that our staff are ready to respond. FEMA has been on the leading edge over the last half decade or longer at uh, acquisition techniques and processes to make sure that materials are where they need to be using techniques from the private sector and reshaping the government techniques. What do you have, uh, if anything, on the docket to try to accelerate that process even more? Madam Administrator. You know, managing the supply chain and the logistics that are needed to support disaster response is such a critical element of what FEMA does. And we worked really closely with the private sector uh, managing the supply chain um, in response to COVID-19. And it's that continued relationship that we're continuing to expand upon to make sure that we can learn from uh, the private sector and how they were able to increase their resource distribution and what we can do to make sure that we tap into that, that level of capability um, when we respond to the next um, major disaster that happens. Um, that partnership with the private sector is critical, one, to just learn from their expertise, but two, partnering with them at the time of um, so we can make sure that people get the resources they need when they need it. I know that you're preparing for the hurricane season, as I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation. What else are you preparing for today that you know you can anticipate and how are you preparing for something god forbid like another covid that we don't know that it's coming it just shows up one day yeah, it's a great question, right? So we know that we're in hurricane season right now. The peak of hurricane season will, you know, happen starting in about August, but we're seeing an increase in wildfire season. And so we're working really closely. Our regional administrators do such a great job across our 10 regions to work with their state directors and understand where their capabilities are, where their needs are, so that we can help them plan for these emergencies. You know, we've moved away from kind of a uh, cyclical season of disasters, and we really are seeing year-round events um, that require support that state and locals um, either need to be prepared for themselves or, um, when needed, reach out to the federal government for assistance. I think one of the things that we do best here is that helping people before 
part. Um, we have a number of programs, um, grants, technical assistance that really help the state and local jurisdictions increase their own level of preparedness. Because at the end of the day, it's really a system. It's an emergency management system that comes together the disasters start and end at the local level, we need to make sure that they're ready to do that. The states help them with the resources they have. And then if it exceeds those uh, capabilities, then the federal government can come in and assist. Madam Administrator, thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate your time. All right. Thank you so much.